Hi friends, I am going to describe about the cervical spondylosis and its management through acupuncture. Cervical spondylosis is a degenerative disorder at the level of cervical spine. It is also called as osteoarthritis of the spine. So everybody know that cervical spondylosis is associated with severe neck pain and it is debilitating to disturb the day-to-day -day activities or lifestyle disturb the one's daily activities. So it's the result of degeneration of intervertebral disc or the body of the vertebrae in the cervical region. So before treating through any system, proper diagnosis is very important. So here the, there are two diagnostic criteria we can consider and we can correlate because perfect diagnosis leads us towards the perfect treatment. So modern diagnostic criteria are like first one is clinical examination. So one has to check the range of motion in the neck testing the reflexes and muscle strength to find out if there is any pressure on the spinal nerves or on the spinal cord. Differential diagnosis is very important because the cervical spondylosis also mimic like the pain in the cervical spondylosis is also mimic like the other conditions. So we need to observe the gait and we have to perform the compression test which includes uh, vertebral compression test or it's also known as foramen compression test and also it is disc traction test. So uh, all together it can be considered as a spurling test. Apart from the clinical test, we need to go the laboratory investigations like nerve conduction study to find out if there any specific nerve root is involved and also electromyography which explains about the electrical activity of the muscles. Now looking at the symptoms, cervical pain aggravates by movement, there will be referred pain especially to the occipital area, shoulder blades and upper limb. Based on the uh, nerve involved or the dermatome involved, we can see the pain on the outer aspect of the upper arm or on the forearm or it may radiate to the three fingers also. Cervical stiffness is also associated which may be reversible or it may be irreversible also. Vague numbness, tingling sensation or weakness in the upper limb and sometimes dizziness or a feeling of vertigo. Poor balance, rarely syncope or if person is having migraine it may trigger and also there may be pseudo angina which mimics like the pain due to the heart origin. What are the signs? So these are the signs the physician has to elicit. Poorly localized tenderness. So we have to elicit the tenderness, try to find out the specification of tender area. Then there will be limited range of movements. We have to check about the forward flexion, backward extension, lateral flexion and rotation to both the sides where we can give especially the involvement of the typical dermatomes. Minor neurological changes like inverted supinator jerk unless complicated by myelopathy or radiculopathy. Sometimes it is also involved with cervical cord compression myelopathy. So Hoffman's sign may be significance of cervical cord compression myelopathy. The imaging technique which we can use to diagnose cervical spondylosis are presence ex neck x-ray which can explain us about the presence of osteophytes to confirm the degenerative changes. They are also called as bone spurs. The osteophytes are nothing but excessive bone growth. And also we can rule out the tumors, infections or fractures. CT scan also provide us more detailed imaging particularly of bones. MRI. MRI also helps to pinpoint area 
uh, and also where the exact the compression area also can be find out or if there is any impingement that also can be made out easily. Myelograph, a tracer dye is injected into the spinal canal to provide more detailed x-ray or CT imaging they, to find out if there is any cervical canal stenosis which can be better diagnosed. As we discussed, these are the traditional concepts. Now we will look for the traditional Chinese medicine diagnosis. According to TCM, the exogenous factors like wind, cold and damp are the important causes for these musculoskeletal pain. So how do we differentiate? It can be either acute or chronic cervical arthritis. Needle with reducing method to release the exterior, expel the wind, cold and move the chi and blood into the area. So we can see in these conditions the pulse will be hollow. Now coming to the points, to expel the exogenous pathogenic factor we can use the point triple warmer 5 it is uh, known as vague one which is located to chun proximal to the midpoint of the dorsal wrist crease. And one more point GB20 which is Feng Chi located at the apex of the posterior triangle mainly helps to relieve the stiffness of the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscle. According to TCM it helps to expel the pathogenic wind, cold and to move the Chi and blood into the, from the to and uh, fro from the neck. The one more important point GV14 which is known as Dazui, it releases the exterior uh, in a, uh, wind, cold and damp accumulation. We can use Moxa in case of cold or damp conditions along with the local points. TCM objectives of treatment, it helps to tonify kidney and liver to produce chi and blood, unblock the meridians, clear the dampness, promote the blood circulation and stop pains. It also helps to strengthen the functions of the organs, unblock the meridians, nourishes the liver spleen to produce the chi and blood, expel the cold and wind for flow of chi and blood. Apart from the TCM, there is a general management for cervical spondylosis that is based on the local pain and based on the therapeutic and evidences on the physiological functions. One is Tianzu that is from the UB meridian point, UB10, Feng Chi, GB20, Dazui, GB14, Binavo, Li14, Dashu, UB11, Huato points, extra 21, along with the supplementary points, GV20, L7, SI3, SJ5, Li4, GB34, GB39, Stomach44. And along with this, we can also use the ear points like ear shenmen and the cervical area. Based on the experience as well as based on the available documents or evidences, musculoskeletal treatments are better managed by acupuncture. It definitely helps to relieve the pain and to reduce the sufferings. Thank you.